both called in, Cassandra and I, to sign our contracts. Right. And I took one look at her and spun on my heel and left. <laughs> so I was appalled. So this is a real ripoff. Oh, total. Yeah, total. So my what, show completely. So what are you going to do about it, Maya? Well, I'm suing. You are? Yeah, I'm finally suing. She, I've been trying all these years, but I was unable to get an attorney because I had no money. But I finally have someone who's doing it on consignment. I don't have to pay her out front, uh -huh. and I finally found a nice lady. So you're bitter about this, aren't you? I mean... I don't know about bitter. I think philosophically one of my shortcomings is I don't know how to be bitter. If I did, I mean, I think I'd have more drive. Because when you had your show, Vampira, you had superstars watching you, and they oh. all loved you. You oh. were a cult following here in the 50s, early I 50s. Because I watched you before I went to Europe. You I did? certainly did. I remember watching you very, very closely. Jimmy Dean was here. Yeah. And you were very... Jimmy Dean was on the show one day. He did. He, he was on the Vampire Show, yeah. He came to see you. Right. He did it because he loved you, I understand. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You were very close with James yeah. Dean. Yeah. He Tell was my me. best friend. How did you meet James? Well, um, I had gone to a premiere. It was a premiere of Roman Holiday. And I wanted to see who, who makes up the Hollywood, you know, the, the, the glittering people of, the, of that firmament. Right. And uh, I said, there's nobody here I like. Nobody except the kid with, who is with Terry Moore. Oh, he was with Terry Moore? He was with Terry Moore that night. And I didn't uh -huh. know who he was, but I said, that's somebody I want to know. Uh -huh. And uh, 12 hours later, he walked into Googie's. Googie's was the hangout on that was a, That was a, yeah. Next to Schwab's. Next to Schwab's. That was the all-night coffee hangout. But it was afternoon. It was the next afternoon when Jimmy uh -huh. walked in uh -huh. with a little girl. And uh, then somebody affected uh, an introduction. And that's, uh -huh. we were never again separated. Oh, occasionally I went home he, to my husband. Yeah, you were married, were you? <laughs> yes. Vampira. You were in dark. This is this is you. As in, I'm going to show the people this. This is really you. This is a small picture, but can you see that? That is, that is like Elvira. Mm -hmm. Elvira That's is really doing vampire. Yeah. That's well. I did the set for the Elvira show too. What they call movie macabre. Uh -huh. I designed the set and everything. Uh -huh. But I mean, it's just a copy of the set I had on on uh, Channel yes. Seven. So the red velvet couch and everything. So you wrote all the material. Uh huh. Well, she has a writer now, but I no. Initially, I had a writer, yeah. Peter Robinson. And he allowed me to co-write, and then the more I got into the character, the more I understood how to do it. What's the difference between your show and Elvira's show? Well, there is a little difference there. Uh, uh, no, she has put an extra little crown wig, a little sort of a mo uh -huh. wig, uh -huh. from Manny Mo and Jack, or something. Uh -huh. A little mo wig on top of uh -huh. the vampire wig. Yes. She's changed the spelling of the name, and that's it. Those are the only two differences. So that is your creation. Yes. So there are I at least eighty similarities. It's identical. It's my show. Because it's a really a Jane Russell sex there, isn't there? Isn't there a combination of Jane Russell there, oh. of uh, sultry Jane Russell from The Outlaw, the way she's carrying on? Oh, yeah, baby. Am I correct? Yeah, uh, am I correct? Yeah. <laughs> That's right. Did you sing? Um, did you sing on the show at all? Or? Oh, okay. Yes, what? occasionally little little ditties. I sang uh -huh. things like, wait, let's see. Um, oh. Uh, some like it. I mean, gentlemen prefer blonde. Uh -huh. Was just out, and so I did a little Marilyn Monroe uh -huh. parody. I understand. She was, watched the show and she loved you. I understand. That's what I was. Norma told. Jean, right? Norma Jean, yeah. So I sang that um, "Diamonds Are a Girl's Best Friend." Just a little phrase or two uh -huh. in this manner, a cappella. Right. Uh, now this is Vampira. I'm going to take my glasses yes, off. Go ahead. Now this is Vampira doing it. I yeah. Can recall how it goes. A scar on the hand may be quite continental, but demons are a ghoul's best friend. <laughs> I love it. So to that extent, I sang. <laughs> what kind of a guy James Dean was when he used to come to your house? I understand he used to come to your house and, and he used to sit on your porch. I understand he did your porch, uh, painted your porch. Yeah. Black? No. Blacker, was it? No, or but it was very dark gray. It looked dark black. gray? It was very dark gray. It looked Tell black. me about that. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, he was a big star then. No, as a matter of fact, Jimmy was not a big star. He then. wasn't. No, he was well known on Broadway, and Kazan had brought him here, and he had played a lead in a movie, East of Eden, which was not yet released. Ah, uh, okay. So, although he had been, you know, touted by Warner Brothers, uh -huh. the world didn't know who he was yet, and not even Googies paid too much attention to him in the early, very early days. And we'd go in there, and people crowded around me because, uh -huh. believe it or not, I was a girl of the minute, right? Right. And Jimmy would be pushed aside, and he'd call to me over the heads, asses and elbows. Asses and elbows? Right. <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> That's, That's what he had in his face. Oh, I Everybody see. was clamoring oh, for I me see. and showing Elsa, him yeah. just rear yeah. ends and elbows. Right. And then overnight, his star rocketed, and I 
went mind plummeted. Uh -huh. And then the same people were clamoring around him, mm -hmm. and I was on the outer fringes, raising, yes. it, waving at him and saying, asses and elbows. Uh -huh. And there were the same asses and the same elbows did in you, my face now. Did, did he drive motor, Did he drive a motorcycle? In those days, he didn't have an automobile. He had a, just Motor a motorcycle. A motorcycle. In the, beginning. In the very beginning, yeah. He always wore jeans, did he? Always, almost. Well, yes. That was Why his always uniform. jeans, you think? Okay. Well, because he was comfortable and he was a farm boy. Uh, jeans are great. Why do people wear jeans today? True, true. They true. feel great. True, true. Like another skin. And he hated to be encumbered by his clothes. Uh -huh. There was enough in life encumbering him, I guess, when you're that sensitive. Right. Did you do any films when you had your show? Any motion pictures at all? I did, the, I did Plan 9 from Outer Space, but uh -huh. I, in that I didn't play Vampira. I was dressed as Vampira, but I didn't play the role because I was a zombie. You know. I see. Did you want to be an actress when you first arrived here? Uh, well, I was brought here by Howard Hawks. To, oh, you uh, were? Yeah. Oh, to okay. be the I was going to do a Faulkner film called Dreadful Hollow. I was to be a vampire in that. Uh-huh. Well, that never came through. And so I did Vampire instead. Uh-huh. What made you get into the horror films, like into a horror lady? And oh, well, I, who knows how these things evolve. But I know that when I was 14 years old, uh, Snow White and the Seven Dwarves came out, and I fell madly in love with the evil queen. Mm -hmm. I see. Do you know what she looks like? Yeah. Oh, she's cool, alabaster uh -huh. face, and she has these arched black eyebrows. She had no hair. She was, I think uh -huh. she wore, a, 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 you know, a cr the crown covered everything. That, that, But it was depression, and I was very poor. I was a scrawny, demoralized, depression child, uh -huh. and uh, I didn't have any self-assurance. And I saw this image, and I said, that's what I want to be. Uh -huh cool and self-assured. Yes. I didn't especially love the evil part, uh -huh. but I love the composure, yeah. right? Cassandra Peterson claims that she has never seen your show. Do you believe that? I believe she didn't ever see the original Vampire show in those days because uh -huh. she was 10 years old in Kansas or right, somewhere. Right, right, but would she? But she has all the kinescopes that I was just about to buy. There are 54 private kinnies I was about so to buy. So she have seen them? And somebody, well, I think she owns them. Somebody bought them right from under me. Really? Yeah when I was in, in negotiating with the people to buy them. I had tracked them down. With so you have, they're not I don't know for sure she saw them, except uh -huh. uh, in February of 82, she proceeded to emulate my performance exactly. And prior to that, she didn't know exactly how I to see. do Vampire. But then now she emulates every gesture. I like the camera to face on Jimmy Dean over there. If you can give me that beautiful observatory. This is going to be at the observatory, of the Hollywood Observatory, isn't it? Griffith Park. Griffith Park. This is part. Kenneth Kendall's, and this is the gentleman that is going, he knew Jimmy Dean very well, and this is the gentleman that sculptured the head of Jimmy Dean, and you are presenting it to the... Yes, I presented it to the city. It took about three years to get the thing going. Uh -huh. uh, Mayor Brad, it was based on the fact that Mayor Bradley declared uh, September 30th, 1985, James Dean Day. Uh -huh. So I thought, well, the time is ripe for this. Uh -huh. So I just wrote him a letter uh, proposing this as a gift, uh -huh. and I said I thought it would be an appropriate ornament for Griffith Observatory because uh -huh. the film Rebel Without Cause right. was shot there. Uh -huh. So uh, Dr. Krupp, the director, was enthusiastic from the beginning, uh, but it took a long time to get the thing ironed out. And uh, earlier this year, it was passed by the Department of Recreation and Parks. Uh -huh. and lost, you know, I had to go through City Hall uh -huh. and was accepted and will be unveiled this November 1st, which is a Tuesday, and that's under the auspices of a group called Friends of Griffith Observatory. They're uh -huh. handling that part of it. Now, who's going to unveil this? We haven't uh, really got this the... This beautiful, beautiful... Can you get a good shot on that again for me? I'd like to see the people look at that real... I, who's going to really unveil We that? haven't really got uh, the right person. We were hoping for one of the leading ladies, but uh, uh -huh. one is in the east and the other one is otherwise occupied, so... But this lady, well, this lady knew Jimmy Dean. Yeah. They were very close. Well, we, she might and be the person. And he loved her when he first arrived in this town. She would be wonderful coming well, out of... Uh, well, we had suggested that if she were delivered in a hearse and, <laughs> in a hearse. and tipped out of a coffin uh -huh. and stepped, because nothing succeeds like bad taste, that would get, <laughs> exactly. the, yeah, that would get the coverage uh -huh. that we would like to have. But the fact that the uh, statue is going to be there for, we hope, a long, long time, uh -huh. uh, 
and it makes it a center because there's t tour buses like people from Japan uh -huh. showing up there. The first thing they head right down and back for the place where the knife fight yes. in Rebels took place uh -huh. and start snapping pictures of one another. You knew Jimmy very well. No, Did, no, he, really? I knew James Dean for one hour. One hour? It was on the, on, I received a telephone call from an emissary saying uh -huh. that the actor, James Dean, would like to meet me. Would I like to meet him? Right. That was the, so they, he showed up about uh, half an hour later. Uh -huh. And uh, I never really timed it, but there were six Chesterfield butts in the ashtray uh -huh. at the end of the interview, uh -huh. however long that takes. And uh, he had really come there. Uh, he wanted to ask me if I would be interested uh -huh. in sculpting him, which he finally did. So and, you, you uh, yeah, I, uh, I thought it was just as Myla said, uh, East of Eden hadn't been released. Uh -huh. He was quantity X. We'd heard a lot about him, but we didn't know yes. what, uh -huh. you know, what uh -huh. he could do. And when he asked me about the sculpture, I was thinking to myself, but you really think you're in this world class of people that I'm doing? Uh -huh. you know? uh, but I was very, you know, I was taken with the fact You've that You've been doing a lot of people. You did Marlon Brando without well, knowing yeah, him either. That was, uh, that's, well, the Marlon Brando is what attracted James Dean. Is that what it is? Yeah, yeah, because Brando wasn't interested in his sculpture. I've done some others. You did this right it, here? Yeah. I love yeah. this. It's May I fun show piece. this? Yeah. This is yeah. beautiful. Look at this. It's a uh, if my camera girl can get this. Technically, it's what they call here, a right. dummy board. Can you get that, darling? That is just beautiful. Kendall. It's Kenneth Kendall. Right. And how long have you been in Hollywood, Kenneth? I, well, I was born on Wilshire Boulevard. Well, you're a Good Samaritan Hospital. Uh -huh. I'm native. And went to school here. You've been an artist for ever since. Ever since. Yeah, I was always kind of the artist in school. What was your you know? first sculpture? I mean, your uh, first. Who was your well, first? Well, I had I hadn't touched sculpture for about fifteen years. Right. When I started the Brando head, someone else said they were going to do a head of Brando, and I thought. I'm going to do a hit of brand. I see. Uh -huh. So I just picked it up, and that was uh -huh. very successful, uh -huh. as I say, except with uh, Marlon, uh, and attracted Dean, uh -huh. which was really the uh, the main thing. J Myla, did, did James Dean really looked up to Brando at the time? Tell me, what would you? Oh, say? Marlon, I think was his god. He was. Yeah, I think so. Marlon was his god. What made it his god? What would you think? Why? Well, they, for, well, the fact that, uh, maybe the fact that Jimmy was in love with himself. Because they had, him. maybe, uh -huh. you know, I mean psychically, not yeah. with his own face, yes. but with his own yes. entity. Yes. Because they were very similar people. And Jimmy was alone in a world and strange, and there wasn't much he could really identify with. Uh -huh. But I think he could identify with Marlon. Uh -huh. And that intensified his desire. And then Marlon rejected him. I and see. you know what rejection does yes. to yes. the human beast. Yes, yes. <laughs> he was very sensitive, wasn't he? Who, Marlon Jim, or Jimmy? No, Jimmy. 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 Oh, yes, of course. Very sensitive yes, yes, young man. Yes. He loved to be alone. Yeah. Yeah. What do you think made him so that way growing up so in, in, yeah, he, Indiana? Isn't morose? It? Mm, yes. What, yeah. Well, what well, he was, de he was an only child who was abnormally close to his mother. Mm -hmm. His father was kind of cool and detached and busy. And uh, then Mama just, as Jimmy said, when, she, when Jimmy was only nine, he said, she cut out. He, went to, he was a farm boy, you know, and he went to New York, and then yeah. he got on Broadway. Yeah. He had a rough time in New York. Had a hard time. Yeah. yeah, he went to Jerry's Spaghetti Place, and they used to feed him spaghetti. Jerry's uh, restaurant used yeah. to feed him spaghetti. Yeah. I remember those days. Yeah, that he was knew a, a lot of hunger. He was an, what sign was Jimmy Dean? Aquarius. Was he? Yeah, yeah. Aquarius. Tomorrow, what's, what's tomorrow, you know what day tomorrow is? No, I don't. Oh, maybe I shouldn't say that. Please do. It's the 33rd anniversary of his death. Oh, it is. September 30th. Mm -hmm. How did that take you when that you have first heard of Jimmy Dean's Well, I didn't death. believe it. I mean, nobody who knew Jimmy just, well, you couldn't believe it because mm -hmm. a person who is so vital, so incredibly intense, mm -hmm. it's impossible to picture them, you know, but still and a, unanimated. But impossible. he was a fast driver. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he was fast and reckless. Yeah, because I had James, uh, James Bacon on my show. And he saw Jimmy Dean one night and he says, God, if you don't slow down, young man, you're going to have, you're going to, you're going to get killed. Yeah. And um, two months later, after that, he got killed. Oh, James yeah. Dean told me. Oh, uh, yeah. That's what uh, James, James Bacon, Bacon told said. me. Yes. Uh -huh. Tell me about Jimmy Dean in your in your days. You said you only met him for one hour, but uh, yeah. Well, he for that one hour, what stuck in your mind with that man? Well, the uh, the thing was, he came in, 
and uh, what you saw needed a shave, was horn-rimmed, looking a little kind of grubby, uh -huh. and... Uh, That's Jimmy all the time, isn't Grubby. It? <laughs> yeah, but at the end of the interview, he had stepped out of the door uh -huh. and turned around and put his hand out and looked up in my eyes and smiled and that I say a wreath of dimples and he turned himself into the most beautiful thing I've ever seen. Uh -huh. There is no photograph of what I saw and it was just like being struck by lightning to see the, this uh -huh. beautiful face and he was truly grateful for the fact you know that I had said yes we're gonna do the sculpture and so yes. forth. So I think he sort of threw the whole personality at me and that thing and it may well have been his double whammy it might have been something that he staged but boy did it work now that jacket, <laughs> like yesterday that jacket you got on. this yes. I got this is a replica of the jacket that he had on at the time uh -huh. and uh, I had a folio of stuff of Brando which he wanted to look through so he set that out on the couch and he still had the jacket on so uh -huh. he got up off the coffee table sitting peeled out of it very slowly, right. held it out like that at arm's length, and just opened his hand and let the thing crunch on the floor. And I was sitting over in that direction. He looked over to see how the oddball action had affected me. Uh -huh. And I still, I see that face all the time in photography, you know, when he, when he looked uh -huh. over at the thing. But he certainly uh, made an impression. Kenneth, this is uh, Jimmy Dean's. Well, that's the, the model photographed on the site there at, on the, the, site? at the observatory. At the observatory? I see. And this that, is the observatory a, right yeah, here. Yes. That gives you a better idea. Wait, wait, it, okay. it hits the, uh, yeah, the wall. Yeah, I see. There's uh, the observatory. Yeah. I see. Jimmy, ever talked about that wonderful picture with Sal Minio? Yeah, well, I was Sal and him were very, very close, weren't they? No, they weren't. They weren't? No, they weren't. Now, why did a lot of people think they were very close? Uh, well, because publicists have said so. But Sal Minio was a very young boy, and Jimmy didn't associate with teenagers. He okay. was a young adult. He was busy associating with people his own age. Oh, okay. And, and a little older, but he, he admired liked, older people. He liked people. you, though, didn't he? I mean, he oh, came yeah. to you, and oh, he yeah. got some advice. And oh, yeah. What kind of advice did you give him, Myla? Oh, this young man? What would you let's see. Well, for one thing, we were driving up, we were driving up um, Sunset Plaza Drive. Right. I was in, Jack Simmons had an antique hearse that we rode in. Yes. And Jimmy was on his motorcycle in front of us. Uh -huh. Well, he was going up, the, you know how the road curves? Yes, right. He was in front of us at night, and our headlights were like a spotlight uh -huh. to him. And he was going this way on his motorcycle, like his hands over his head. He was uh -huh. swinging, swaying his hips so that the motorcycle was almost lying on its side. I and see. any car coming down the other way would not have seen him. He would have been killed instantly. I see. He likes to, they like to carry on, those kids, though. And he wouldn't stop. I was yelling out of the window, uh -huh. stop, stop. So the only way we were able to get him to stop was to pull over to the side and turn right. our lights off so that he no longer had a stage and an audience. Mm -hmm. And then he ultimately pulled over. But, I mean, I told him not to. I told him about animals. I didn't, he was shooting rabbits. And Marlon had sent a message that there's nothing clever about that. And nice. so I did tell Jimmy that I did not approve of his killing animals. Uh -huh. But I didn't, otherwise I didn't give him a lot of did personal advice. Did he take advice. any joke, you think, uh, Myla? I know he didn't. He I, he's, no, he smoked marijuana a couple of times. He didn't mm -hmm. even drink. He drank a lot of coffee. He drank a lot of coffee. Yeah, like Jimmy Chris had a natural high. He was a genius. He just had a natural Christopher high. Christopher Jones. We have an actor by the name of Christopher Jones. Uh -huh. Doesn't drink. Doesn't take dope. Drinks a lot of coffee. People think he takes dope. And, am I right, Kenneth? Well, people, I'm Kenneth, I, I have known Chris Jones a long time. A lot of people think he was on dope. He's never been on dope. Well, you know, in you the know, it's, yeah. that coffee just winds you up. In the yeah. early days, Orson Welles told we, Orson Welles and I discussed the fact that people always thought that he was he had never tasted alcohol, and uh -huh. people or and people would think that he was on drugs. Yes, yes. And me too. I was totally temperate in my early years. Uh -huh. I had never even sipped wine. People always thought I was drunk. Uh -huh. But it's something about a natural chemistry that some people have an abnormal intensity. I have that. I know I, you yes, do. I, do darling. <laughs> I, I know have the you same do. Thing. I do. Do people too. think you're drunk when yes, you're sober or high exactly. on something? Exactly, because it's you are that, high on the natch. Yeah, exactly. Right. And I'm that way. Right. Tell me, what are you going to do about Elvira? I mean, that I wanted Cassandra to Peterson. Oh. What do you think you want to do with it? Well, I've sued her, right? That's right. We haven't served the papers yet, I guess. I, I don't know what. What my would you like her to do for you? I mean, uh, what would I like her to her do for to, me? Yes. What would you like? Well, ideally, She's I made would a like lot her. of money. She's made a lot of money on your ideas. You know. Ah. Uh, what I would like her to do is something impossible. I'd like her to develop a conscience. I don't think she's able to do that. But uh, other do than... Mean, I don't know. 
What do you mean? You want her to develop a conscience. Like well, if she had a conscience, she'd cease behaving. She'd stop taking things that are not hers if she had a conscience. She will. Or else she'd take them and suffer. Instead, she's proud of her acts, right? Oh. I'd like her to develop a conscience, and I'd like her to cease and desist. Of course, that's not uh, arbitrarily the only business tack. Perhaps my lawyer has other ideas, but I would like her to cease and desist. Nice. I don't want her doing Vampira. For one thing, she's too old. She's past the big 4-0, and Vampira, you know, shouldn't be more than, so shouldn't should look be, more than 30 so there should be another ever. girl. Well, she's got a new movie out now. This is her yeah. first film. Yeah. And it's going to be very successful, I understand. Possibly. How do you feel? How do you feel about that? Well, are you bitter about that? Come on, you know, Elvira's got a big movie now. You started it. This is your idea. Well, they do say. What do they say about imitation? Two things: right. sincerest compliment, or sincerest form of plagiarism. Right. I think it's the sincerest form of plagiarism. Uh, I'm not thrilled, but by the same token, I know it's my creative imagination. Were it not for my creative imagination, she'd still be a bit player on the Z Channel. I see. You know, she wouldn't be making the movie. It is a tribute to me, but I would like some of that money to go where it belongs. It belongs to the Fund for Animals. Fund for, is that what you're for? Fund for Animals? Yeah. That money is theirs. It's not anybody else's. It's not for Malibu beach houses why do you or say BMWs. Why, why is that? Well, that's why I wanted. That's why I created that for vampire. Your show? That's why I created vampire in the first place to raise money for the animals. Well, don't you think the animal people should do something about that then? Why don't you let them do it, and get after that? If that's if that's well, your I idea. have my attorney is. Well, I mean, we're suing. We're suing for a minimum of ten million dollars, or, uh -huh. or or a maximum of four hundred and sixty million, which is uh -huh. in the stratosphere there somewhere, but. Mm -hmm. What have you been doing with yourself nowadays? You've been away for a long time. What have, mm -hmm. what has Myla been doing? What have you been doing? Where have you been? Well, I'm a mixed media artist who's very lazy and often doesn't work at all. But when I do, I uh, I, I write short stories. I do illustrations. I write verse. I make uh, necklaces like this sling here. You can't see it anyway. I make beads, pins. You know. Would you, would you call yourself a bohemian or a hippie those days? So all of those things. All those things? All those That's things. wonderful. I was a bohemian in the early days. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. And then a uh, beatnik. Uh-huh. I never really quite got to be a hippie, but I was a mother of the hippies. I had a little shop for them, and they Did you really? in the flower children, yeah. Where was this? Uh, on Melrose. On Melrose. It was the first Melrose. So you Melrose. really are the first Melrose lady, then? Let me say that Jimmy Dean wore these glasses. That's why I wore them today. He wore Is them. That really? Yeah. He wore long? them for about an hour. Just I think oh, you probably knew Jimmy longer than an oh, hour, eh, Kenneth? <laughs> They're lovely. <laughs> but anyway, he did wear them for one hour. <laughs> did he really? They're lovely. Yeah. Yeah, they're hand carved in Italy, and I had bought them in the mid '40s. And then one night I was wearing them, and Jimmy just. What kind of people used to come to your shop when you had the shop on Melrose? Well, Gracie Slick came there, and uh -huh. Little Moon Zappa came when she was five years old with her mama. Uh -huh. And uh, I had a lot of musicians from up at the uh, Whiskey who would come down the hill. I was right, right down the hill from the Whiskey, and I was making Victorian slops for them. Those are those velvet bloomers. The whiskey used to be the place. Kenneth remembers my shop. Mm -hmm. Did you? Yes. Kenneth was there. He was one of the colorful people. It must people. have been very, very. I wasn't around Hollywood then. Bob Mackey came in. He was next door. Bob Mackey. Mm -hmm, the designer. His uh -huh. shop was next door. Uh -huh. But Sunset Boulevard was hot those days, wasn't it? I Sunset. Mean, oh yeah. Sunset and Melrose. Those were Melrose wasn't really no. Hot. Melrose I was not hot. I opened up Melrose. He <laughs> did. He opened Melrose. What do you 1953. Mean? I opened my studio there, and there was nothing. There was an occasional a cleaner, uh -huh. real estate people, and uh -huh. wood shops. Uh -huh. Plumbing. Uh, plumbing yeah, shop. Yeah, plumbing. Yeah, <laughs> things of that nature. And right. my place looked like a, a candy shop or something. It was really painted up. It's still there. It's part mm -hmm. of. What would you advise young people with creative ideas and? Uh, if they have an idea, how to protect that idea? Can they protect that idea? People, uh, you know, what would you tell yeah. them? Yeah, let me say that there are now some new laws in effect. They're just recent, whereby you can protect your identity and 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 create. A, it's easier now to create protect creative products than yes. it had been in the past. Yes, you know, because people steal all the time. Oh yeah. You know, there's I, a I lot of theft in, comics, in the industry. Yeah. They steal from comedians. Well, they steal from oh. titles of shows. They, oh well, speaking you know. of stealing, may I say that uh, uh, Elvira has a comic book called Elvira's um, what is it, Haunted House yes, or something, right, House right, of Mystery right. or something, and uh, they use various artists to illustrate these things. Right. But one of the artists has put Vampira's body on her. Now that uh, that That's, incenses me. Yes. I mean, artists do idealize. She has no waistline, so right. they will idealize. But they put my calves on her, uh -huh. vampires calves, vampires, you know, and yes, and I, that incenses me. This is the vampire's body. Where is it? I've got to show it to the people. 
Now here is Elvira and there, can you see that? This is Vampira and this is Elvira. Look at this, this is, now can you see that? I wanna show you. You got that? Now that is very close. See now she reminds me of Jane Russell, Elvira, and the outlaw. Oh, she's doing, yeah, am I correct? Look at that. No. That's an outlaw of Jane Russell between you, you see? But see, you were just more elegant than she was. Campy, that is called campy, isn't it? Campy. What yes. makes, this is another one of you, right? That's right. That's Elvira. the original Elvira. <laughs> right, uh, Vampira. The original, yes. the original mm -hmm. Vampira. Yeah. So that must really, I don't blame you. I really don't blame you to do what you have to do. Because you started on channel, Channel, no, uh, channel 7 and then ultimately on Is that a half nine. hour show? No, you run the movie and so the... And you did the else. movies and stuff? Sure, yeah. Run. Oh, of course. So you did the same, so identical? Identical, the same set, the same, same corridor to come in and everything, yeah. Same, same. two sets, right. What are your lawyers going to do about it? Is it look good for you? Uh, what yeah, do you think? it looks good, but then you never know. You never know. Mm -hmm. Do you live in California? You've been living here all this time? Uh-huh. I see. All the while. Kenneth? Any uh, new people you are doing at the moment? No, no.